It's Friday, beer day. So, we are gonna work on some cars today. GTR, you guys have seen this. The only thing why it's not super drivable right now is it just needs a new battery and it's a JDM car and the battery's in a weird spot and it's a weird size. So we're gonna get that out of there. We'll see if we can get one. E34 wagon, 540 wagon. I got some new wheels for that. So we're gonna see if we can get them to fit. Uh, I only got one side though, because FedEx sucks and half of my shipment got seized by customs or something. I don't understand, that came from Europe. But I do have two wheels, the front and the rear. So at least we can test fit some wheels and tire, or some tires on those wheels to see how we can get them to fit. And then, that might be it. I don't know. We'll Will see. Will did have us clear the uh, hoon zone though. I think that was literally just for him to come in. Well, we missed it, but we will do more of that. Yeah. But, another car that if you guys are new subscribers, maybe you don't know about. So this car, new subscribers. We've talked about this car a few times. I don't think anybody really knows about this car. This is a roadkill zip tie drive car. It's an E34. Nobody goes back that far in our history. And That's it's what depressing because this car's amazing. This car's amazing. So and it's it a 535 i with a 66 mil turbo. It should make like 800 horsepower when we finally make it stop catching on fire. But anyway, which has been what three times now at least? I think maybe thirty pounds of boost, right? Thirty pounds of boost, right? No, it would be like <laughs> three, four. Let's, let's it did, a, hey, it didn't catch on, on fire. Let's give a brief synopsis of. Well, first of all, I'm drinking beer. I failed, so I'm a weak human. Anyway, um, let's give a brief. <laughs> let's give a brief synopsis. I never stop. So we built it the first time. Okay, so we built this it, car. Wait, wait, wait. But I lit it on fire the first time while we were building it. No, caught on fire. Yeah, caught on fire. It's on video. Cut oh. to that clip. Why is the ground on fire? Oh, I lit the ground on fire, and now Chris's foot's on fire. So we built this car in a week for Roadkill Zip Tie Drags in January. When we finished it, then we road tested it and tried and tuned it with the Mega Squirt, and it kind of over boosted. I might have been a little bit wrong about how much boost the stock head bolts could take, and we'll. <laughs> Managed to not set any sort of boost control limit in the ECU oh, no, 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 or no. on the boost controller. On the contrary, there was limits, but the boost controller was backwards. Because we're well, good. We, we it was really basically running unlimited wastegate, <laughs> which we didn't know. So twin spikes, like screen. somewhere between 20 and 25 psi, and uh, lifted the head off and oh. shot the head gasket. Yeah, off the look, side. and here, here's that. We have it. This is the head gasket from it. That you piece, should, should that six close. inch piece shot out of the block. When you guys talk about blowing head gaskets, that's not a normal thing. No, when we blow a head gasket, we don't fuck around. Then Will tried to roll start the car after all of the coolant filled all of the cylinders from that. Didn't think about that. And bent some rods. Yep. We didn't know that at the time though, so then rods we four and five. the car to Arizona. <laughs> and then... But well, we had a plan. We brought tools and an engine hoist and a head and an extra motor and everything. Yeah, and then ordered an MLS head gasket and ARP head studs and fixed it at the track. Put the whole thing back together with MLS head gasket, ARP head studs. She was ready to rock. She was at the track. We fixed it outside of the track entrance because we got there before anybody else. Fixed. And then, you know, you can watch the video. It's right here for the rest of it. But either way, it was a failure. We got it back here. We completely rebuilt another engine with we, some we of those parts. Combined two engines to make one engine, and it started up pretty much first try, I think. Yeah, it went good. It, it went good. It. Shot lots of fireballs. Then it just sat because when we tried to tune it, it just as soon as it tried to make any boost, it fucked up. It blows out spark. And yeah, wasn't good. So yeah. then we took it down to our buddy. Sean at Shogun Speed Shop in the Springs. Great guy, Sean, like you. And started working on it, got new plugs in it, did some things, started making boost at four pounds. 340 horsepower to be exact. Here's a clip of it on the dyno. And then Will was like, I'm gonna make it back for kickball and I can't wait for Hamish and the trailer, so I'm just gonna drive it back to Denver from the Springs. 60 something miles. And it was doing good, except for the fact that it was leaking oil unbeknownst to me on the turbo. And running super rich and shooting fireballs all the uh -huh. time. Yep. So then Will caught the whole car on fire, which you've seen in other videos. It looked like. Look at my Instagram to see firefighters putting that shit out. Yep, that happened. So, now that you're up to date on this car, this car is fucking sick. It's an E34, 535i. 66 mil turbo, makes uh, man rapid spool. Rapid spool. Mm -hmm. Intake, mm -hmm. it's got BC coilovers. 
A 315 large case LSD. Is this the M5 Trans? I can't remember. No, we didn't put the M5 Trans in it, but now we have an extra one, so it's gonna get an M5 Trans. So it's gonna be 265. That. Yeah, M5 axles, like literally, oh, it's got- Racing dynamic sway bars. Brakes, off F of off F of an F3 brakes? Well, F F30 M Sport F30. brakes. So that way we can still fit 17s. So we run into that problem that Will ran into in his other thing and only fit 18s. We can still run 17s on this yep, car. Yeah, I have the big boys on there. This car fucks. It's got but Sparco it, seats, it runs on Mega Squirt. This. We're gonna make that do it. This but, is gonna fix things. But why it's on the lift is our buddy Brandon is building us an exhaust. So that this time when it shoots fireballs, it shoots them out of there instead of in the engine bay. Also, this is an exhaust tip off of a Honda Goldwing. I don't know what year. I'm thinking that right there is pretty perfect. So we're trying to find three inch to four and a half inch adapter and we're gonna cut out, draw out those to take this weird baffling thing out of there. But yeah, it, free exhaust tip. So that's that car. Also, we need more beer. Just saying so we're out. You said we had a whole fucking case. Yeah, well it's gone now. I told Will to get beer. He's like, dude, I'm not getting beer. We well, have I don't a whole know where case. We literally had a brand new case of 24 yesterday, so. Let's get on with our day. Stonks. All right, guys, I'm trying to get the damn battery out of this thing, which is dead, and. Motorex. So the battery in R33 is up here instead of in the front, like R32. It's still not a very big battery. You have to take the goddamn GTR strut bar off, though, to get the battery out. It won't fit over. So, great design, Nissan in the 90s. If you think R33s are cool, think again. Yeah, I don't know. Still the best car ever made. Yeah. Ever. Have you seen a BMW Isetta? You just said BMW Isetta. Steve Urkel car, guys. It only has one door. Yep. And it's in the front. Yep. Well, I'll come back when you're done with the best car ever made. All right, so I got the battery out. You can see their weird size. This one was converted to SAE terminal, so it's not the tiny JDM ones, but it's still an odd size battery. But Mike says he's got one. So since Will left without me, we're gonna go visit Mike tonight and see if we can get one. So that's the end of the battery shit for this video. So this is naturally agitated. Pretty much the Vanos Pro locally here and almost worldwide. Yeah, worldwide. Especially especially for S54 stuff, man. That's that's his thing. S54 and S85, that's my jam. That's his wheelhouse. So what's going on? Uh, we got a uh, CSL clone conversion. Uh, CSL was a Coupe Sport lightweight uh, E46 model that wasn't um, blessed with the presence to arrive into North America because of our good old Department of Transportation. Well said. Didn't think that carbon fiber was approved for motor cars in 2003. So we didn't get to uh, to bless North America with carbon fiber on a road car. And I guess if you guys are watching this stuff, you all know that everything's made in carbon fiber now. Um, so this car's got a stroked and bored 3.4 liter um, S54 motor with custom cams. Originally it was a 3.2 liter. It's got the full CSL conversion. It's all OE parts, OE CSL box, OE CSL roof. OE CSL boot lid uh, and complete interior from Tony Kanan. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> yeah, this thing Full is CSL Recaro interior. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the car seats, but and, and Tony Kanan, the indie car driver. Yeah, not, not just some dude named Tony Kanan. I ha yeah, <laughs> actually, uh, true story. I couldn't deal with the Tony Kanan center console because it had two Kanan stickers that were, one was embezzled into here and one was I think back here. I, I couldn't deal with somebody else's last name in my car. So I had to pony out another 1500 bucks for another one in the center. <laughs> Fair I enough. I couldn't ruin the other one. Uh, you wanna hear it? Yeah, absolutely. So it has six to one headers now. That's awesome. So CSL carbon, right? But then left it unpainted so that you know. <laughs> Not one of the fiberglass reps. <laughs> yeah, that's a really nice touch. This is a super cool car. Yeah, pretty much the ultimate E46 M3. Like, Definitely. Like leave it NA, all you weird turbo people out there. Well, this is the highest horsepower NA 
uh, S54, right? That I know of, yeah. I made 465 on the engine dyno and 395 to the tire. And Mike uses this car. This isn't just a, a show car. He does uh, time attack stuff, autocross stuff, and then his favorite is uh, like the shift sector half mile. If y'all are into uh, following this car, Naturally Agitated is, is our page if you want to follow us. If you have any S54, S85, S62 Vanos problems, we are the Vanos solver and we won't kick you in the nuts in your wallet like Dr. Vanos. JDM 540i Touring. Looks sweet. Looks great. These wheels, they actually belong to the turbo car that you saw on the lift, that black E34. So, got some new wheels from across the pond. What do we do with old wheels? Thing. If you guys watched the video with Rednick drifting at the track, apparently we fixed the cooling system by just overheating the shit out of it because she used to get hot. Now she's just staying dead even. I love these wheels. Right here. Oh man, those are clean. Freshly polished lips, freshly powder coated centers, eight and a half inch front, ten and a half inch rear. Oh, specs. They're 18s. Um, 18 by eight and a half plus 13 on the front. 18 by 10 plus 19 on the rear. Um, I have a set of these in 17s though that I tried to fit on the wagon before I got these. Uh, or no, I tried to fit on the turbo car before I got these. And with pretty much any kind of bigger brake upgrade, the back of the spokes require spacing and they're already such an aggressive lip that by the time you start spacing it out you're running into the fender so that is the only e34 that i own that i don't plan on doing a brake upgrade on we're going to just mount some tires and then see how they fit okay well let's do that so i have four of these federal they're uh, the 595 rs's i have four brand new ones of these that are the 245 40 which is a good size to run on the front of E34. That's what's on that uh, wagon right now. Actually, the exact same tire. I'm worried with the slightly bit more aggressive wheel fitment. Wheel fitment. It might rub a little bit. That car has spacers on it though now, so we'll see. But I really don't want to run 245 squared. So I see if I can find some a little bit wider for the rear. You don't want to run a stretchy boy. Yeah, I don't want to stretch a, ten, a 245 on a 10. Yeah. So we'll see what else I can find. I'm going to get this one mounted up. So cool thing about these wheels is when you can see the lip on that one, like it's a crazy deep lip, right? Yeah. That'd be like a more flight to mount. But Rondell was thinking back in the 90s okay. Sounds good, and they made the rear side like what I call it the drop center. They made it have a really big drop center. So reverse mounting is really easy on these wheels. That's the only reason I'm mounting them because I wouldn't want to fuck them up. But they're really easy to mount. Nice. Yep, that's the tire. So I'll show you guys on the thing. We lost that plastic thing. This is like an Italian tire change machine that we can't seem to find the pads for. And I just did that whole thing without wearing it at all. We good? Yep. All right. So these are Style 65 wheels. They're um, the factory M5 wheels on an E39 M5. Uh, fronts are eight, I believe. Plus 13, but they might be eight plus 20. They're not. They're not crazy aggressive. This is a much more aggressive wheel. Uh, but I actually am running, I believe, a 10 mil spacer behind this. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna make that one fit. So. Oh, I didn't take the spacer off. Spacer. Whoa, oh, she looks pretty aggressive. I don't know, guys. Uh, I think it's gonna look so good. Oh, dude, we are money. That is nice. 
Dude, that's where it's at. It needs a little bit more low. It needs some low. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna end up uh, deleting the self leveling in the rear and putting BCs on this car. I really like the way that that the turbo car rides. But I am not upset at that at all. So the internet, the forums, it's really hard to find things about these wheels. But everybody says run a 225 on that. Man, I think a 225 would look horrible. What is this now? This is a 245. Yeah, that's. I think people just like a lot of stretch, but that is, dude, it is so shiny and reflective. Like it looks super good on camera. So now let's mount up the 10 incher. So you said he found a tire for it. I found, I'm gonna try something. I got, I found a couple, I got a couple sets of something. So I got these, uh, I don't even know what these are. Some Falcon, uh, I don't know. Some Falcons, some ZXs, but they're 275, 35. I do have a fair, uh, also a set of uh, 265s, if these are a little bit too big, but I would rather run the 275, so let's see. Whoa, they're a little tighter than the other ones. We might scuff the inside of these ones a little bit. I don't want to look at this. Ah, I messed her up a little bit. She's gonna be all right though. What I don't want to mess up is the wheel. She's mounted. I don't know how much you saw, but I struggled to mount it. But she's mounted and not marred. No, it's quite pretty. So, let's see if it fits. So, this is again the same tire size that is already on the rear of the car, but this is a much more aggressive wheel. We recently bought this place and the previous owner dumped this camper shell here. So if you guys need a topper for a truck, I think it's for a Ram or something, Come get the fuck out of here. Help us out. We don't know what to do with it. All right. I honestly think the Ooh. fitment's gonna be butter. The old one was definitely rubbing with the spacer. I think that's just burnout material. No, it's rubbing. It looks like we got, we got a little, we could roll these though. I'm not scared to, not scared to roll these virgin fenders. Stance boy Diego over here, he's he's sure they're gonna clear. They're gonna clear. It's gonna clear. Moment of truth. Again, it's not that low because of self-leveling suspension, so we'll see. And I mounted the tire backwards. I think it says inside right there. So this already tire had a fair bit of camber wear, so it's already missing some of its wall there. So Gives us a little bit of help. Oh, dude, she's mine. Yeah. That's gonna be fine. She's gonna fit. She just needs, you know. She's more low. She needs more low. But these wheels are dope. I like them. They're dopey. They're nice and polished. They're boys. I could put a plate of salmon for seven on there. You know what I'm saying? Dishy. Dishy, Dishy boy. Yeah, they're nice. It's like a, you know, a, a vegetable platter with dip yeah. for like 10 people. It's super hot. We were going to do some cool things, but it's so fucking hot right now. It's like oh, well over 100, I think. I don't know. Maybe not well over 100, but I don't know. It was 100 when I was on the way in. It's yeah, it's been, a, it's been a 100 degree day pretty consistently. Yeah. So I think we're going to go home and drink some beer in the AC. So that's the day at the shop. It's been hot. We got some stuff done. I like the new wheels on the E34 Touring Support Vehicle. This is what we take everywhere when we need to haul a tent and everything else, but she's still a whole lot of fun because she's a V8 with a six-speed and a good LSD, so. But I will say, what, I'm gonna be a lot less uh, stoked on thrashing her with these wheels on it because I like these a yeah. lot. Yeah, Chris had to talk to me because I usually drive the support vehicle. Be like, no curbin. No curbin. We gotta keep the mirror polish looking fresh. Are you gonna ceramic coat it? That's a good idea. I didn't think about that. We're gonna ceramic coat it or get somebody to that maybe knows what they're doing. There you go. So, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe! Will says subscribe. I think that's a good idea. So, peace.